All right, friends, we're going to go live on Facebook, Facebook, Zoom, Instagram. All right, and all three platforms today. This is week four, week four, modern money class with, uh, we just had a camera fall, um, our Instagram camera fell. Week four, I might need some help with that one. Uh, week four, modern money class with Dan Keller, and today is all about credit score. So what you need to know, so whether you're a young adult, whether you are an adult and we're never taught about credit, uh, credit or credit scoring, what you need to know about your credit, how to build your credit score, and more importantly, when you get old like me, how to maintain a great credit score. So this is gonna be a great class, about 15 to 20 minutes today, a lot of really good nuggets. We're gonna go super elementary, Starting off talking about what is debt, what is credit, what is interest, a couple of minutes on all of that. But before we do that, I want to share kind of a recap of weeks one, two, and three. So what have you missed? We talked about money mindset, the 18-year-old millionaire, and all of these are on YouTube. All of these are on my personal Facebook page too. I'm trying to get this out to as many people as possible because I think there's a huge gap in America right now relative to personal finance. Uh, the lack of financial education last year in America cost Americans over $400 billion. Three quarters of Americans um, are living paycheck to paycheck. Uh, I read something the other day that over 80% of Americans lose sleep over money. This class is more important than it's ever been. And that's why I'm teaching it. All of this stuff is free. All this stuff is uh, things that I've learned over the last, I want to say 45 years of being alive, but professionally over the last 15 to 20 years, okay? So we talked about uh, money mindset, the 18-year-old millionaire. We talked about the psychology of money. Uh, we also talked last week, so relevant, about inflation and how the U.S. dollar works, inflation and recessions and what to do, what the rich do. Last week's episode was amazing. What the rich do with their money during times of inflation, what the rich do with their money um, during recessions. All right, so three weeks in the books. This week is going to be really good. It's all about credit score. So I'm going to share this with you first. We're going to watch a video. And I learned this little hack this last week um, when I was researching this. And I think it's really important because I want you guys to hear this. It's, it's a great video, but I want you to get the most out of this. So I'm going to stink the sound. Hopefully you get the sound with this. And uh, this is only like a minute long, but I thought this was kind of a, I don't know if this is called a parody or what, but. Let's give this a listen. What are you gonna order? I'm thinking tacos. Hey, have you checked your credit score recently? Don't you think I can't afford tacos? No, I was just curious. Oh, you just, well, yeah, I have checked it recently and I got like a hundred, you know, which my guy says it's uh, one of the highest scores he's ever seen. So, you know, Taco Tuesday, here I come. <laughs> <laughs> what, you don't like tacos or something? No, your guy? Come on. Everyone knows that the highest credit score that you can get is a thousand. That's what I meant. I, got, I messed up the word. It was a flub. You know, when I said a hundred, I just forgot the other zero. Different word. Thousand credits is what I meant to say. Totally got a thousand credits. Okay, so to be clear, credit scores <laughs> don't go credits. up to a thousand. The scale runs from 300 to 850. All right, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about credit score. We're going to talk about everything that you need to know about credit and credit scoring. But first and foremost, before we do that, I want to give everyone, and I think this is so important. This is really important, whether you are 18 or an adult, when it comes to understanding credit scores, understanding how this comes about, how a credit score comes about. How do you get into debt? How do you get a credit score? And so we're going to show you, I'm going to show you real quick is let me give you kind of an overview of the importance of a credit score. What is a credit score? What is interest? What is debt? And what is credit? So one of the things that I want to talk about real quick is, and, and this goes all the way back, I will not get biblical on you, but I might share something from way back two, 3,000 years ago. But the you have to understand that debt will lead you into the trap of entitlement. Okay, kids, Young adults, listen to this. You don't deserve anything unless you can pay cash for it. Now, all the older people and real estate agents and mortgage lenders listening to this know I'm not taking a page out of Dave Ramsey's book right now and telling you that you have to pay cash for a house. 
I do believe that if you can pay cash for a car, you should pay cash for a car. I do believe that there is good credit and bad credit. We'll get into that next week when we talk about debt. But for now, it's important to understand because I see this even with my 16-year-old daughter right now. No, she's not out racking up credit cards, but delayed gratification. There's something to be said about delayed gratification. So I'm going to read this to you again. Debt will lead you into a trap of entitlement. You don't deserve anything unless you can pay cash for it. So what is debt? Debt is typically money or something that is owed or due. So we're talking about money. So debt is money that you've borrowed from someone, a lending institution or on a credit card that is owed or due. Now I pulled this out of the Bible and this is a proverb. So we're not going to get too religious on you, but the rich, it says in Proverbs 22, seven, the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is a slave to the lender. Think about this. I have personally long time ago been in a lot of debt and I never, ever felt more hopeless, helpless, and a slave to know that every dollar that I'm earning is going to pay off, paying off money that I've borrowed from a lending institution. And that is 3,000 years ago when it was written in the Bible or however long ago that was written or documented. It's true today. The rich rule over the poor and the borrower is a slave to the lender. So what is credit? So for example, today we're going to talk about credit relative to a credit card. A credit card or a credit line allows you to borrow money from a bank to purchase goods or services or something of value. So you're getting credit, you're using a credit card, and you're borrowing money to pay for something that you don't have the ability to pay for right now. Again, all the high-level people that want to correct me on this, that like, I use my credit cards to get miles. So do I. We're talking to young adults, okay? This is a modern money class. For young adults, and these are just basic principles. This is why I don't jump on Dave Ramsey's page and rip him a new one all the time because he gives blanket, basic, fundamental money advice. If you're doing really good with money and you're very responsible with credit and with debt, it's a different story. Okay. So we need to talk about when you're talking about credit and you're talking about debt, you have to talk about the fee for borrowing that money. That fee is called interest. So think of it this way interest is the cost for borrowing money from the bank until you pay it back. Think of it this way. This is how I explain it to young people and sometimes my clients. Think of it as rent on your money. You're renting the money from the bank. You're renting money from the bank until you pay it back. The bank uses their money to make money for them from you in the form of interest or their monthly fee to rent you that money. Okay, so you're borrowing money from the bank to pay for something, hopefully, if you're borrowing that money, what you're buying or what you're paying for helps you make more money or helps improve your quality of life, all right? So that brings us now to better understanding what a credit score is. I believe you have to understand what debt is. You have to understand what credit is. You have to understand what interest is before you properly explain what a credit score is. So a credit score is a number, like you heard the, in the video, a credit score is a number from 300 to 850 that rates a consumer's credit worthiness. The higher the score, the better the borrower looks to a lender. Okay, I'm in the mortgage industry. I've pulled probably hundreds of thousands of credit reports in 15 years. I've never seen an 850 credit score. And any of you guys that are watching this, maybe thinking about applying for a mortgage or thinking about coming and talking to me, I and you think you have bad credit. I have also seen horrible credit reports, horrible credit scores. I personally had a horrible credit score coming out of graduate school, trying to buy my first condo. Luckily, I had someone, a real estate professional, get me in touch with someone who could help fix my credit. And it changed my life. It taught me about credit. But I never knew that you didn't have to pay back your student loans right away when they sent you invoices. <laughs> I got the invoice. So I'm like, I don't have $300 or 200 bucks. I'm not going to pay this and I'll you know, whatever, I'll pay it down the road. Well, that didn't work out really good. Same thing with, I think back then it was called um, the bond. It was a, uh, what is it called now? Macy's? Okay, it's called Macy's now, but it was a clothing store. I bought a couple of things there because I got a credit card from them and um, they sent a payment to my parents' house. I never got, and I never made the payment. So when I went to buy my first home, I think it was like in the fours, it was horrible. If Lori's watching this, you can, you can confirm. It was pretty bad. 
but we fixed it. And now today I'm in the 800s. Thank God. So I am well equipped, not only as a mortgage professional, but personally to help you better understand how to go from a crappy credit score to a really great credit score. And I'm going to teach you how to do it here, but I also have the experience too, the life experience. Before I teach you all that good stuff, let's talk about that 300 to 850 range. So 300 to 629 is considered poor, bad, okay? Um, 630 to 689 is considered fair, okay? 690 to 719 is considered good. And generally speaking, a 720 credit score or higher is considered excellent. In the mortgage world, it's just a little higher than that. A 740 credit score kind of puts you into that A plus range. Once you get over 740, listen to me, Instagram. Once you get over 740, you can't get an A plus plus on an exam, right? So if you have a 752 credit score and you're like, dang it, I want an 850. It doesn't matter. You've already got an A plus, like all you smart people like Haley right here that got straight A's in high school and I got straight C's. You guys are set in the curve and you're screwing all of us other people out of a out of a grade here. You can't get an A plus plus. Be happy you got an A plus. All right. 740 credit score, A plus. Okay. It's important to understand that. Now, this is what I teach people right now that are trying to buy homes. So adults, this is for you. And young adults, you'll like this too. But what makes up a credit score? All right, I like to use this pie chart. There's five factors that make up your credit score. Let's start with the two big ones, all right? Number one, it's a no-brainer. Payment history. Payment history. So late payments gonna hurt you the most. Really easy general rule of thumb. When you get a statement sent to your house, pay it off or pay that make the minimum payment. Payment history is the bulk of what makes up your credit score, okay? Make sure you make your bills on time, pay your bills on time. Number two, which is a close second, 30% of your credit score is based on amount owed. So let's say you have a $10,000 limit on a credit card. Anything over, they, there's arguments sake here, but anything over a 30% loan to balance, or so, excuse me, balance to limit, will start to hurt your credit score. You know, anything higher than 50, 60%, it's gonna really start to impact. So amount owed, the general rule of thumb, if you have a $10,000 limit on a credit card, keep it under $2,000 a month, you should be good, okay? The general rule of thumb here with FICO is 30%. I like to tell my clients, keep it around 20%. All right, the next in line, new accounts. So new accounts, too many new accounts. So that's me. that means you're out applying for credit. So one of the things I teach my clients is if you are going to try to establish credit, you're going to go to Walmart uh, or Home Depot or your favorite place to go clothing shopping. Let's say it's American Eagle. Um, you're going to go to those places on the same day, go to all three of them and apply for credit, all three of them. Okay. It, you might be able to sneak in there without the credit uh, scoring algorithms, credit bureaus reporting an inquiry. Okay, you're going to end up getting three inquiries, but when you go to Home Depot and then you go to Walmart and then you go to uh, American Eagle, it may not register as quickly. And you might want to fact check me on that, any of you credit repair people. Okay, so new accounts. If you're out applying for new accounts, that's going to ding your credit score. The next one is length of history. How long you've had those accounts is really important. A short history isn't a bad thing if you show responsible res responsibility for credit management. I like to tell my clients, a minimum of 12 months, three accounts, minimum of 12 months, and you're well on your way to having an A-plus credit rating, a 740 credit score or higher. All right, and then the last one, the types of credit. So the types of credit, 10% of it is based off of you know credit cards, uh, revolving accounts, installment accounts. So uh, auto loans, credit cards, lines of credit, student loans, mortgages. Mortgage is the highest form of credit that you can get right now. So if you have a mortgage, you paid it on time, you have multiple mortgages and you pay them on time, you're probably going to have a pretty good and resilient credit score. Um, so that's that's it right now as far as credit reporting, credit score. Now I'm going to give you a hack right now. I'm going to give you guys a hack. And I think this is really, really, really uh, important. I think everyone should write this down. And I'm going to post this in the chat uh, and the comments. One of the things right now with AI, artificial intelligence, is I think that everything that you do is being monitored. Uh, your social security number is out there. Um, your information, your personal information is out there. If you go to optoutprescreen.com, it's a free service. Optoutprescreen.com. What it does is it puts a block up 
for these vendors to get access to your information, to sell your information, one. And then also by doing this, it protects you and it actually helps raise your credit score. Optoutprescreen.com. It's a hack for me. I teach this to all of my mortgage clients. This is one that protects you. It helps a little with um, maybe identity theft and your information getting out there, but more so it adds a couple points to your credit score. The other thing I want you to do with the recent breach in the last few years, even like one of the big credit reporting bureaus had a breach and they got hacked. Remember that? I think it was, was it Experian or Equifax? One of the E's, um, they got hacked. And so I think it's more important than ever to protect your score. Young people, your credit score is all you have financially in the world. It's your financial integrity in the United States of America. If you want to finance something, um, if you want to get insurance, if you want to sometimes applying for a job, it's very, very, very important that you protect that. You can go to all three of the credit bureaus. So there's Experian, there's TransUnion, and there's Equifax. And you can do this for free. You can put a freeze or a block on those accounts, meaning that nobody can pull your credit without you unfreezing those accounts. I think that's smart to protect you from identity theft. So I've got about five or six other notes that I wanna share with you guys, and then we'll wrap up today. Um, I wanna to explain to youngsters what a social security number is. I'm explaining it to my kids right now. And it's your ID, it's your identification number. So a social security number was developed in 1936. It's a nine digit number that helps the US government track your earnings history. It's also used to rate your ability to repay debt should you ask a borrower for money or a lender for money. Okay, so it's really important that you protect that number. Teaching my daughter this right now. Protect your social security number. Nobody gets to see that. That's private. If someone asks you for it, the only people that should ask you for a social security number is if you're applying for a job, maybe, maybe the last four, but um, debt. Anytime you're applying for debt or excuse me, for credit, a debtor might ask you for your, for your social security number, but ask me, I'm telling my daughter this, ask me first before you ever give that thing out. All right. Protect it with all of your life. I already talked about optoutprescreen.com. I'm going to put that down in the chat. But again, optoutprescreen.com. Go there and that will help add some uh, points to your credit score, but it'll also help prevent your info being sold on the black market or the free market. Okay. We live in an uh, information era right now and your information's out there um, and it's sick. It's sad. Uh, I want to talk about real quick, the key parts of uh, your financial integrity, your financial health is your credit score. And what I mean by that is, and I use this example, I use this example when I talk about credit, that your character in life is your word. Your character in life is what you do when no one's looking, right? Your financial character is how you pay your bills, how you manage your credit. So going back to that initial quote, that very first quote that I shared with you guys about, you know, let me pull this up again, because I also I want to close with this. I think it's such a great quote. Debt will lead you into the trap of entitlement. Okay, you don't deserve anything unless you can pay cash for it. And so when you're considering taking on debt or when you're considering making a purchase or buying those shoes, I use a general rule of thumb when it comes to vehicles later in life. If I can't pay cash for it twice, don't buy it. Okay, don't finance it. If it can't pay cash for it twice, don't buy it. Do you really need those shoes? And then we talked about when we were a few weeks ago, we were talking about the psychology of money. Understand this, the future, being able to calculate the future costs of today's decision. So if I buy those $300 shoes or that $1,000 purse on a credit card, and you're paying it at 16% interest because you can't pay for it. What if you took that $1,000 and you invested it with a 7% return over 10 years or 20 years? Okay. So being able to calculate the future cost of today's decisions is so important. And let's wrap with this. Big question. So before I was teaching this class this week, I kind of threw this out there and talked to a couple of people about, hey, what are some big questions that you might ask me uh, relative to credit? And one of them was, how do you establish credit if you don't have credit? So I want to end with this. If you're young and you have a zero credit score, you have no credit rating and you need to establish it. 
one of the easiest ways to establish your credit score. Now, there's some advanced tactics. I want you to reach out to me if it's more urgent and advanced. But one of the easiest ways is to grab a parent or a guardian or a friend or a family member and have them add you as an authorized user. Have them add you onto one of their credit accounts. See, you inherit their credit history by doing that. It's so simple and it's so easy. And just by doing that one thing, you can get a credit score. Then you can go now to American Eagle, Home Depot, Walmart, wherever you target. I don't care. Pick stores like that. The reason why I name dropped those retail stores is they're easier. They'll give you a $250 credit card. All right. If you don't have a credit score and if you don't have someone that can help you co-sign, Try one of those four stores, Home Depot, American Eagle, Target, Walmart, Lowe's. Am I missing any? Any other easy stores, retail stores? Nordstrom probably has a little bit higher bar. Try one of those four retail stores and apply for one of their credit cards. When they say what a limit, just do a small limit, like a $200, $500 limit. Okay, if you can, apply for credit. Worst thing they can say is no. You just got to keep trying. Okay. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. Remember two things. I want you to share this. We want to get this information out. There's a massive financial crisis right now in America. So if you found this valuable, please share it. Number two, I'm a mortgage guy. I do mortgages for a living. If you know anyone who's looking for a great mortgage professional, or if you want to have any questions relative to real estate investing or mortgage financing, I'd love to be your resource. I'd love to be your guy. Okay. I want y'all have a great rest of the week. Happy hump day. And we'll see you next Wednesday. Next week, next Wednesday's class is going to be amazing. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it's going to be awesome. We'll see you online next Wednesday.